Legacy Traders, it's Tim. <laughs> Smile was absolutely forced because this week tore me apart, but we're going to break that down for you in this week's version of Friday Market Recap. So I've got Jesse here. How are you doing, Jesse? I've had better weeks, yes, for sure. I hear you. I hear you. Um, so let's let's hop into it, man. Um, I got ripped apart. Probably the biggest losing week, maybe in a good while. In a good while. I don't know exactly like when's the last time I've had a week down this bad, but um, it is what it is. And tra- we value transparency. So so here it is. Um, you see this, right? Yes. No, yes, I see. So you see that big fat loser of seven hundred fifty bucks. Um, that Ooh. was mainly by this spy <laughs> spy position and then i'm also in another account over here and i lost another 85 bucks so we're talking about over over 800 dollars um here that i've lost um the biggest drawdowns were these two trades here of spy and abt and so we'll we'll break them down i started out maybe if i go into activity i started out uh 1023 and i said man i'm gonna go long 1023 into the spy it was this day because it was setting right at the bottom of this candle body and it was bouncing up and i'm like this is totally going to form a w pattern and we can bounce up and then what happens we have a three percent move to the downside and i just got lit um on this long spy call and then um you look at abt and it's also i entered in at um 1023 here with a long call and it's because it looked something similar that back here, it was, man, it's setting um, on the 200 day simple moving average and it bounced up. I'm like, this thing is gonna, it, we're gonna come up to maybe a price point up here. Didn't happen. So what did I do into both of these trades? You can see here, I have my number of contracts on and this uh, red cost column here is my first initial long positions in both of them. I spent 200 bucks per contract for spies. So four contracts was 800 bucks. And then I spent, uh, I think it was, what is it, 480 divided by eight. I spent 60 bucks per contract in ABT and they both just tanked. Uh, this one you can see was down, I, I think, you know, I only invested 800 bucks into it, but it was down 700 of the 800 bucks, basically a max loss. So what did I do to recoup that lost capital I sold a call closer to the money and I turned these things into bear call spreads. And so out of the 480, this thing was down 300 bucks. I recouped $392 of the 480. And I did this not extending my, um, well, in this case I did, that's 150. Uh, I did this with the goal to keep my max loss the same as my max loss per contract in the long position. Um, so I didn't want to increase my max loss, but I did want to recoup that lost capital. So here in the SPY, um, I was able to recoup $432 of the $800, but this thing was down $700, $700 out of the 800 is basically a max loss. So what I did is I took a max loss and I turned it into a 50% loss or just a little bit, um, less than that. And then TSN, that's a long, uh, put so a downward play and that's been working out for me i paid 444 and it's up to 10 almost 50 percent and then bti is a long put to the downside paid 478 and it's just now going um but i want to pay a little bit more attention down to these spies because um we'll go and mirror this trade let's just make sure i get the right november 2nd uh 274 277 november 2nd 274 so it's here and then the 277.50 so this is the trade that i had set up originally was this long position and this was at like the 30 delta now it's at the seven then it got slammed uh and so i turned it into a bear call spread but now look at this my probability of profits at 88 percent and my probability of capturing 50 percent of the profits at 76 and you can see it's past this one standard deviation this blue dotted line and this uh, brown line represents the expected move, which is also over here, and it's out of the expected move. So I'm planning on holding both SPY and ABT as these bear call spreads, um, originally long calls turned into bear call spreads. And if 
best case scenario, I'll lose 368 bucks on the SPY and I'll lose 88 bucks compared to losing, you know, $400 and $700 um, in that. So a little bit of trade management there and the TSN I think is looking sexy. It's the only thing I'm excited about in the, the markets because I've been getting thrashed, but it just looks so good to me right now. Um, it's, it was channeling up, hit this downward trend line, and it's coming down. All the indicators say it's moving downward, and um, the overall market's moving downward. So I could, this thing could move down to maybe this price point down here, which is 56. It's about a $4 move, and I have a collective of 127 delta. So that's 500 additional dollars that I would make. Um, so one dollar every one dollar this would move downward i'd make 127 and it's got about a four dollar um move range to the downside which would mean i'd be able to pull in about 700 dollars on a four on a 440 profit so that's what i got i got thrashed you saw my numbers i kept it real 754 on one account and then another 85 on another account that's just kind of how the cookie crumbled this week is one of my biggest losses uh, for in the past few months. Um, and so it's not fun to eat or chew on or doesn't, doesn't get me excited, but it is what it is. Um, so Jesse, you go and then um, maybe you can do the, uh, the expected move for the rest of the week too in the overall markets. All right. Sounds good. I will do it. Let me share my screen here. Okay, this is SPY. <clears throat> so the uh let's do the last seven days whoa it's a big one okay so in the uh this week i had uh three winners and three losers um i got chopped up on my losers pretty heavily which ate up all my losses so i am literally down 56 bucks um for the week overall so Fifty-six dollars is not not terrible, um, but I, I could have done better, and I'm just facing a little bit of disappointment in myself. But that's that's the way uh, I learn. So, with that being said, let's go into the trade, which was uh, MCD. Which this was a McDonald's earnings trade. It was an at the money put spread, and um, I'm going to go into the chart. So in McDonald's. I entered in uh, before earnings here where it had just touched its 13 day moving average. It basically barely touched it, just skimmed right off the top. And that's that white dotted line. Yeah, that's the, no, that's the, yeah, the white dotted line here. Yep. Yep. So um, I, it was earnings and there were pre reports uh, on the news. I put this on like right at closing. I actually put a resting order in uh, for 70 cents on this bad boy and it became a full winner. Um, 70 cents on this guy and I just let it rest. I was like, let's see what happens at the money put spread right at the money um, And it was 160 166 50 I think was my short strike. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's few cents. I mean, that's at the money It was literally at the money. So I put in a two and a half dollar wide put spread here This guy after earnings that the day after just boom it was a full winner. It could not have been a perfect, a more perfect trade. It was awesome. It was a 36% ROI. I loved this trade this week. It was a great way to start uh, the week. Uh, the next one I had was UAL, and this was an at the money call. Yeah. Same deal. I put this on the same day, um, and it did. It basically acted exactly like McDonald's. So okay. the next day, it uh, turned around and became a 40% winner. Yep. Uh, Facebook, this was a short play. And I put on an at the money put, actually, no, it wasn't at the money. It was just a put of earnings or this was just a short play. This was just a short play. And this was actually put on, let me show you activity here. And by short play, you mean a bearish down move. Uh, you're directionally biased to a down move. Yeah. This was a uh, call spread, just a bear call spread. I put it on on the 19th. And uh, uh, on the 19th, it was trading here. So it had barely, it, during the day, it touched the 13 day moving average and actually at the close, it actually dropped quite a bit. So I uh, decided I'm gonna go short because the trend lines are 
just speaking to me, hey, this is a solid trend of being short. So I shorted Facebook and it paid off. It I actually closed it on the 24th um, yep. here on that big down day. And uh, it was a wow. solid max win. winner, basically. Yeah, max winner. It was it was really solid. Um, I was very happy. So uh, all the winners that I had were pretty much max winners. It was it was awesome. Yeah. And then I had losers. <laughs> uh, so I, I basically decided to go bullish in EWZ, and it did not accommodate. Uh, EWZ has been ripping me all year, bro. It, it it has and it's it's actually quite it's been quite frustrating let me show you the activity yeah what i do i think it was a yeah this was just a standard put spread at the money $1. Three nine, yeah 39 and a half one dollar put spread and uh, i mean it was really small just kind of like let's see what happens mm -hmm. and uh, i put it on awesome. real quick i know some of the viewers are gonna say what the hell are you talking about you're throwing out some of these lingos. It's like, huh? What? 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 Well, that's a perfect time for you, the viewer, to post in the comments. Say, hey, what does this mean? What is a bear call spread? Why are you using a 13-day moving average? Da, 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 da. All those kind of like question marks that are going off because I know you're having some. Go ahead and post in the comments or email us back and say, hey, what does this mean? Because we're all about helping you learn how to trade and build a legacy. So, keep going, Jesse. With Thank your you. I lingo. love it lingo language i love it so this one i put on just before closing and uh in ewz mm -hmm. and this one was it was on this day and just before closing it was trading right about here and so i said let's put let's put on an at the money which was 39 and a half mm -hmm. at the money put spread because uh it was giving me good signals it was trading above its moving average it had good volume. It, everything about this trade just spoke to me that this thing, all the trend lines are going up. Everything was crossing well. I was like, this is going to be a great trade. How can I lose? <laughs> uh, the next day. Ooh, pretty, much, sure. I pretty much lost it all the next day. And That's the 24th. That was me. I was spy and ABT. I just got slammed. Yeah, 24th was a ripper, dude. It was a ripper day. Mm -hmm. And um, I decided to cut my losses because it was a it was pretty much max loss it was a $70 loser um, actually no actually I waited I came back and I closed it I actually waited for the next day and it was a $25 loser okay cool my dollar loser well, uh, when you're at max loss it's like what's the worst that what could yeah it, you know <laughs> what's the worst that could happen so that's literally why I why I held it and I um, I closed it on uh, the yeah 24th on a nine at 950 so yeah i was like what's the worst whatever um it just ugh, it was a it was a tough one j and j was also pretty tough um it had been it's been basically reacting opposite of the market so on i put this on as kind of like what you would do in uh, bonds so when the stock market goes up the bonds go down and when the bonds go up the stock market goes down because it's a flight to quality meaning that when something is uh, taking on water or more risk you seek out those underlyings and those indexes that are moving opposite of the market j and j was one of those for me and that's why i was putting it on basically i wanted to balance out my up days with my down days and um it just uh i was bullish in this guy it was a long i think it was just a long call yeah long call at 138 i entered this in on the, on the 19th moment of silence no nope. <laughs> I, right? I know right 19th so i entered this here because it had basically it it had rocketed back up and mm -hmm. so all the mm -hmm. signals were telling me hey this is a bullish this is a bullish trade and I figured we had room to go. So on this day, I figured we could go, we could go up to 143 because we had been seeing these great up moves. Sure. And so it had actually retraced a little bit. And then I entered the trade on the 19th thinking this was a good point to enter and yeah. it just never worked out. Um, yeah. the re it just kept consolidating and consolidating. How many days to expiration and did you enter with? Um, this was actually a week into expiration. So this was yeah. on the 19th and uh, this was on like a Friday, right? But it was the 19th. I think it was a Friday. And yeah, then I figured, 
And then I figured on Monday, we're going to open up and I'm going to make or down whatever, either way, I'm going to make money on this because the, in, the indicators were telling me, Hey, this is a potential bull, bull candidate. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it just ate me alive. I, that was a $195 loser. Uh, it, um, it, yeah, it, it ate up. I mean, I traded this thing at 220. I closed out at 25 cents. <laughs> so. Why didn't you, uh, did you, did you think about turning into a bear call spread? I did not. I'm actually trying to keep most of my trading super simple now. So uh, I'm not even, I'm not even like doing adjustments even. I'm, I'm just, if it's not trading the way I should. So big thing for a learning moment for everybody out there really is I did not have active stops on, on any of these calls. And so I was assuming the risk of the max loss of being 220 or 240 for these calls. I figured, eh, if I lose 220, 240, that's not the end of the world. I normally don't lose on uh, calls or max losses. I don't really have them, but uh, this week has been a ripper. So I neglected to put on my stops and I got chewed up and this is the result. Okay. So that, is that, that's your aha moment for the week? That's, that's the aha moment. Um, uh, don't trade naked with stop, without stops. Um, put them on, everybody. <laughs> by, by naked, you mean uh, long long positions long positions yeah long don't trade long and um unless unless you're totally fine with with the max loss that's up to you because this is defined risk here yeah but you um, can't lose any more than than what you paid for it you can't lose any more than what you paid and if you're fine with it then don't worry about it but i um after losing max loss on both these positions (laughs) it became evident to me (laughs) <laughs> I needed to put stops on. Hallelujah. Preach to the choir. <laughs> it became, so you thought you were okay with these max losses and then one happened, you're like, ouch. Two happened, you're like, hell no, not again. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what happened. And so I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to go too further, too much further, but PayPal basically treated me the same way. Um, 240 here. I got in, I exited at 99 cents. It was a big loser. And um, I actually got in on the 24th and exited today. So uh, 24th here, we have this guy. (laughs) So it had basically touched here. And I said, oh, this is not that bad. I feel like I'm getting in at a discount, which is what I was looking at. Because this um, was almost an engulfing uh, bearish, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like a candle body. And uh, when it opened, I saw the overnight action and the overnight action um, was basically positive. So I kept it on. I, I, I kept it on. I was like, okay, we're going up. So I actually, like the first day in the trade, I was doing really well. Second day in the trade, no. No. So it, uh, it basically took all my lunch money and now I'm upset. So <laughs> we're now trading at 83 and uh, 37 cents and it's just... Yeah. Pretty much max loser. I had seven more days left on this option, but uh, the way it's trading now, mm-hmm. today it could not find a bounce. Excuse me. It could not find a bounce today. Um, this candle body here, the spinning top ish body is just indicating to me get out while the getting's good. Mm-hmm. Not that I had much more to lose, but um, at least I get to keep $100. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> whenever you say it like that it's like that is so funny uh, yeah okay so so take us into uh the expectations for this coming week so this coming week uh this is what we're looking at everybody and uh, i have some trend lines here i use um i use the uh 13 day 21 day 50 day 100 day and 200 day uh exponential moving averages on my charts and the uh average true range it helps me set stops and different different things for looking at trends. Uh, the trend lines on this guy woo, are sploosh. <laughs> uh, it's not even it's not even touching its 13 day moving average. Like that's how pathetic SPY is. It's not yeah. like today it couldn't even like just get up. It, it couldn't even do it. And so so just a little bit note to anyone who's watching the shorter the uh, moving average, uh, the stronger the trend. So his shortest um, trend line that he has on is a 13 day period, and it's not even touching that, meaning that the trend is going even stronger than that. Um, I'm yeah. looking at my chart and it's using what's a five day 
exponential moving average, which just means that there's a ton of momentum to the downside um, with what's going on. So, uh, so my outlook is uh, full on bear ah. all day, every day, bear, dude. I mean, I, I'm looking at potentially buying some puts. I, I want to see how Monday reacts. Yeah. I don't really trade Mondays. So I try not to put anything on. Uh, but the um, I'm just going to look, wait and see how Monday goes and then to maybe get in on a Tuesday okay. if I'm going to put anything on uh, bearish wise because uh, I definitely see some follow through, especially from last it, week to this week. It almost looks like a, a falling three continuation pattern, right? Exactly. Like if on Monday, if we have a down day, you have that big red candle body on Thursday or uh, on Wednesday. You have that smaller green uh, candle body on um, Thursday, and then you have this spinning top today on Friday. If there's another big follow through down day on Monday, that would be, that would complete a following three continuation pattern. Exactly. So uh, that's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm going to be hands off most likely on Monday and look for different setups, but that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing. Um, okay, so, so how low do you think it can go? Uh, we were talking, we were talking about this offline. Yeah. Uh, let me share my screen one more time here. So, um, I am Same thinking, reviews. yeah, I'm thinking we could go based on how wicked and strong these moves downward are ripping. Uh -huh. I think this at the, uh, 248, 248 line, yeah. uh, that's the year, uh, that's the January 200 day moving average like sure. number on the yeah. beginning of the year. So uh, we could go that far down. I, I'm, I've, I wouldn't think that that would be unreasonable. Sure. I think that it's very possible that we could, we could rip downward that far. Um, but we'll, we'll see. I mean, if that's the case, then I'm, you're going to see some crying in the streets. Uh, for, in yeah. The but but when there's these types of moves, I, I say all the time, the hardest part, the hardest time to trade the market is in transition periods. And we are likely in a transition period. Um, and so it's really hard to trade, but there's also great opportunities if you can, if you can pull it together and make it happen. Um, so my bottom, I think is back, if you look at the chart, pull up your own chart as you're you know, watching your own video and looking at your own chart, back on April 4th, um, the lows there are around 258. I think that's our, I think we could go down to that low. 258, 258. 256, 256 on me. Yeah, so whatever that, the low, let's go 42, the low there on April 2nd, the low is 254.65. So down, yeah, there down there, I think we could go, but that's still freaking, that's, that's you know, 10 plus points below where we're at right now. Um, on a scale of one to 10, my bearishness, I'm like a nine. I think, yeah. I think we're going to drop. Um, and I'm kind of looking forward to it. I think there's going to be some opportunity to make money there. Um, where other people are running scared, you know, it's like, uh, what is it when the tide shrinks, you see you swimming naked or something like that. When the tide falls, you see you swimming naked. Um, basically whenever things drop like this, you're going to see who's going to eat it, uh, in the overall market. I ate it a little bit this week. I actually I ate it. it. Uh, yeah. Um, PayPal and Johnson Johnson just gave it to me big time. Yep. I love it. <laughs> That's where we start off with this make fake smiles and we end with the fake smiles. But guys, if you want to learn more about stock options and you're like, Hey, this sounds really interesting. I have no idea. You need to enroll in our mini course so you can message us the words mini course uh, to us at option legacy inside Facebook messenger. Whenever you do that, you're going to get access to six videos that break down the basics of what options are and that can begin your journey. And guys, it's absolutely free. And then if you're not inside of our community already inside of Facebook, go search Facebook's option trading legacy traders, and then also find us on YouTube. We're on YouTube, uh, option legacy. You can find us there with all the up-to-date uh, content like this video right here. Until then, we'll see you in the next video and let's build that legacy.